to another edition of Proving Ground, where we try to make training as real as possible. I'm Kevin Michalowski, editor of Concealed Carry Magazine and director of content for the USCCA. In this edition, we'll be talking about protecting houses of worship, teaching you how to make safe where everyone wants to feel secure. The victims range in age from five to 72. I went to that church in Charleston Remember, did I kill him? Say, did you shoot him? Yes. And what you're doing is wrong, and that's wrong, and that's a lie. As he exited the church, a local resident grabbed his rifle and engaged that suspect. Sutton also says if the men were asked to leave and they refused, they could also be charged with trespassing. The expert says this situation should be taken very seriously and it could have easily ended up violent. Sutton says in light of recent terror attacks, every person in that church had a very good reason to be concerned. 911, what's the address of the emergency? Please, it man, no churches, please. People shot down here, please send somebody right away. Shot the pastor, he shot all the men in the church, please come right away. Okay, my partner's gonna be getting some help on the way while I get a little bit more information from you, okay? Stay on the line with me. Are he's you safe? In, Are you... He's still in here, I'm afraid. He's still in here. He's coming, he's coming, he's coming, please. Okay, ma'am, are you able to... I, if he's coming, I need you to be as quiet as possible. We decided to put together some training on protecting houses of worship based on the overwhelming number of questions that we're getting from church members and congregations. They just pour in every time we do a training, every time we do a proving ground, people ask, how can we protect our church? So we decided to bring in some experts and talk to folks at a real church and ask them what they're facing. In the places where we should feel the most safe, the most secure and the most at peace, we still need to think about our security. I'm here with Ron Aguiar from Oasis Safety. Ron, why do we need to protect our houses of worship? Many times people feel this is a great place to be safe. However, more and more violence occurs in churches. Mm -hmm. From a mega church in Colorado Springs where two young teenagers were shot and killed, to a small church in Sutherland, Texas where 26 were killed. It doesn't matter what size of the church, we need to protect our people. Well, how do we have that conversation? How do we get started when we're thinking of putting together a church security team? I think it needs to come from the top. The elders, the deacons, the administrators of a church need to take hold of this and put it in place. They need to give direction, find someone in the congregation who can lead the team. My name is John and I'm one of the pastors here at our church. And uh, I've been uh, on staff for about a year and a half. My call to ministry started out at a very young age and uh, it was something that I felt drawn to and felt like uh, I was being led to go and it's been, a, it's been a process ever since. Yeah, church security has always been something that I've been interested in, not only in my own personal life, but as we begin to continue to see things in the news of attacks at churches and thinking about some of the things that begin to happen, I began to think about our own church here and the, the risk and the exposure that we have and wanted to, to develop a security team that could help us not only on Sunday mornings, but at other special events that we've got going on. Well, once we have that buy-in, who are we looking for? Who's going to help us out? Well, we're looking for police officers, former police officers, maybe military, and some civilians who are familiar with guns. I think that's important. That's what your team is gonna consist of. I think the police officers are great because they're officers 24 seven. When they respond, they're covered, protected, both civilly and criminally by their agency. Then mm -hmm. former military, they're trained also. And then some civilians that have concealed carry permits that are trained to help in a, in a situation. My name's Tom. I'm a member here at the community church. I'm our lead security person at the church. Uh, I also work as a law enforcement officer for the last 10 years. Being a member of the church, uh, I'm very passionate about security. So uh, seeing that there was possibly a need here made me want to get more involved and hopefully improve security of our church for our members. Well, we've got some volunteers from this church security team who want to learn more from you. So I'd really like to introduce you to them and get started on some training. Great. Because of the, the wave of crime that occurs in America in some areas, and churches are not exempt from that. So churches have experienced shootings, they've experienced uh, mental health problems with parishioners and people visiting churches. It creates an environment where churches need to provide security. I got started in this, I'm a former police officer and former security director at Papa John's International for four years and then eventually ended up at a church for 19 years as their safety and security director. 
And church security is something that everybody needs to think about. Uh, protecting houses of worship, regardless of the religious denomination, regardless of any other questions you have about it, churches and synagogues and mosques are typically places that are thought of as safe and people typically don't put together a security plan around that because if you think about it, it's where people go to worship. It's where people go to feel safe and calm and it's a kind, loving area and nobody thinks about a bad guy coming through the door. But it happens more often than we want to talk about. It's the sort of thing that makes huge news because it doesn't happen really often, but when it does, it's tragic. We're changing up the order of this proving ground just a little bit because we wanted to provide some training to the security team first. So we're giving them training, then we're gonna put them in scenarios, give them a little bit more training, put them in scenarios again so that everybody can see what's happening and we can move them along step by step. Typically, we started Proving Ground with a fight, train, fight sequence where we just threw an untrained person into a scenario. We didn't want to do that with the security team because training for church security is so important. We're, we're not just going to go into this blindly. We want them to know what to do, and then we want to see if they do it in accordance with the training they got. I'm here today with Pastor John of this church of about 350 members. Pastor, how did you get started in putting together a security team? Yeah, in light of a number of different things that are going on in the news recently, we just began to reach out to congregation members who we knew were current or former law enforcement and ask them whether or not they'd be willing to be a part of a security team here for our church. Great. Tom, you're a member of the security team here at church. Tell me how you got started and how many members on the team? When those conversations started, uh, being a law enforcement officer, it was a natural fit that I would be on our security team. Okay. And we currently have seven members on our team. We do have two services on Sunday mornings, so we have two to three people on each one of those services. So Tom, explain to me, where do you put your people in the sanctuary? Currently, they sit wherever they like to sit during service. Okay, let me make a suggestion. If you got two or three people, the first person should sit behind the pastor. Normally, he sits on the front row. I put somebody behind him to protect him and the pulpit. The second person I put off on the side where he could watch the congregation in the back door. And the third person, if you've got a third person, somewhere is in the back, also close to a back door. Tell me a little bit about uh, your exterior or maybe doors that come into the sanctuary. Do you do anything there at all? We currently don't, Ron, besides having ushers at those doors. Okay. How would you recommend that we secure those? I think that's a great tool. The ushers can be a really great tool to use. Arm them with radios. They can call you if they see something, say something. That's a great thing to do. And they'll let you know immediately uh, when something is coming down the hallway, coming into the sanctuary. Now that you have your team in place, some of the things you should look for from people that may be out of the ordinary. Someone walking in with a blank stare, someone just approaching the pulpit, someone maybe dressed inappropriately, somebody that's off their medication that may be talking to themselves or just not acting appropriately. I think that's some of the things you should be looking for. Ron, at what point should one of our security team members intervene with that subject? I think you need to do it when you feel led to do it. If somebody's acting inappropriately, I think you do it. Act on the side of caution, always act quickly. Never wait, because an incident could occur very quickly. So don't be afraid to approach them. Approach them very carefully from the front or the side. Talk to them very calmly. See if you can get them out of the sanctuary to talk to them there. You know, Ron, this is really in line with law enforcement training on how to approach a subject that they may be armed. That's good. Now that your team's in place, let's put them to the test. I'm Kevin Michalowski, editor of Concealed Carry Magazine and director of content for the USCCA. I hope you enjoyed this free training video. If you'd like to sign up for our live training broadcast, just click on the button down below, where of course we will be giving away free guns. And please leave your questions and comments down below. We'd love to hear from you.